we're going to testify today. Oh, hey, here we go. We we'll say, I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. Yeah. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Tell me what you believe. I believe in signs and wonders. Yes, I do. I have resurrection power. Yes, I do. Still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. How about your praise? My praise belongs to you forever. This is my testimony from death to life. As Grace rewrote my story, I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Come together, say, come together, sons and daughters. With blood and washed in water. Sing. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Our God will finish what He started. Yeah. This is my testimony from dead to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. From death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Not dead, you're, you're not, not done. done. Check it out. Greater, Greater things are still to come. come. I say to myself, if, if I'm not dead, dead you're, you're not done. done. You're not done. done. No. Greater, Greater things are still to come. come. Yeah, testify. If I'm, I'm not, not dead, dead, you're not done. done. Thank you, Lord. Greater, Greater things are still to come. come. Two more times, somebody. If I'm not dead. Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. From death to life. That's place we wrote my story. I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony.
see a neighbor. And once I take this off, I can't see my neighbor, but <laughs> but I'm good. I'm good. Hallelujah. We are so blessed to have each and every one of you here. I would encourage you. Actually, I can't think. I want you to move around and, and greet somebody today. Amen. I'm going to keep it on so I can see. You. I want to see y'all greet one another. Come on. Nobody is... so blessed right now God we thank you for the great opportunity to give you a praise you know sometimes I think about this what propels a person on a Sunday morning you know to kind of just get up and early and get dressed put on good clothes makeup and come to a ministry you know drive and some people pool and I think about that and I think sometimes it's the same reason that Jesus oh God decide you know what I'm, I'm, I'm going to send my son down I'm going to dress him in like a 
normal human being and I'm going to send him to earth so he can take the sins of the people and redeem us to the God to God and then we wake up every Sunday and we say hey you know God has been good to us so it's the same reason it's called love we love God that's why we came into this room today how many believe that I mean look it's a sacrifice there was a time when a couple on this side of the room was coming all the way from Groveland. Why? Because they love God. And there are folks that are still coming from far and near, but it's the same reason. It's love. We love God. That's why. Amen? You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord.
your presence, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God he lives. Yeah. Praise God he lives. Amen. Hallelujah. This is communion Sunday. But this is also praying time. Hallelujah. I'm going to combine the prayer and the communion or prayer before the communion. The reason why I say that is because the Bible speaks about he who eats and drinks unworthily. You eat and drink damnation to himself. Unworthily meaning an unworthy fashion. And the Jesus that we just sung about, the love of God that, that Minister Simon was saying, that God put flesh on his son, that he come and suffer and die for us. It is necessary for us to reciprocate this love to God. So in our prayer this morning, what I would like us to do is to confess our faults and our sins before God. The Bible says, if anyone thinks he does not have sin, he is deceiving himself. And the truth is not in him. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. And I want us to confess. We can gather together if you want. You can meet with somebody. The Bible says, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. I will confess to you, I find that I have hastiness in me too much. I have a, 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 a prideful anger. I get very angry when someone disrespects me too much. I have arrogance too much. I'm confessing my faults, my sins. I am not a sinner. And you are not sinners. We are saints. But we do sin, we do make mistakes. So the idea is to confess our faults and cleanse ourselves before the living God. Before we get ready to partake of the Lord's Supper. So let us use this time of prayer to confess our sins. To cleanse ourselves. If you want to gather together, if you want to meet with somebody and confess your faults one to another, go ahead and do so. Let us cry out to God to have mercy on us and to cleanse us and to change us where we need changing because he has been good in giving us his son who lives now that we too can live righteously and holily. So let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Oh God, oh Heavenly Father, through your son Jesus Christ we come to you. And we thank you for the sacrifice of your son, the preciousness of his blood, the preciousness of his flesh, the pains and suffering that he went through to save us, the death he died to give us life. We thank you. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit whom you have given us and have transformed us. So we are not mere human beings, but we are born again saints, oh God. And yet we are human, Lord God. And we fail you at times. And we do not live up to your expectations at times. So we come now to confess our sins and our faults. Oh God, we come now to repent. We come to repent before you, Lord. And we plead the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, to cleanse us and make us what you want us to be. I ask, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will give us the boldness and the honesty to recognize our faults and our failures, that we will bring them to you. And I pray, God, that wherever we are deaf or blind or dumb, we cannot see, we don't know our sins, that you will reveal, reveal, reveal to us our sins, our shortcomings, that we will walk righteously and holily before you in the name of Jesus Christ. We present our bodies to you now as living sacrifices, holy, made holy uh, by your righteousness, even your son. We present, we present, uh, oh God, we present this church, uh, we present everyone to you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and we thank you.
and we bless you and we praise you in Jesus name amen may the deacons get ready to serve the communion you may have your seat man. glory be to God praise the Lord and while the communion uh, while the communion is being served I just want to humbly remind you that the communion is very serious Paul says this is the reason why many are sick and weak among us and many sleep because of a failure to rightly discern the Lord's body it's not just a piece of bread it means more the communion it's a fellowship with the body of Christ and the Bible says before when before Jesus went to the cross in the supper that they had the night the Thursday night he took the bread and he said this is my body he gave it to them before he went to the cross before he suffered he gave it to them whole body whole body and Paul said it is one loaf one bread that is broken the breaking is not about his body now. The breaking is about the division of the loaf, the division, the, 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 the sharing, the sharing of the body. Praise God. Go ahead. Glory be to God. The sacredness of the body of Christ, the blood of Christ. Examine yourself, the Bible says, and partake. Even partake in faith.
praise God. Has everyone been served? Did we miss anyone? Has everyone been served? Again, I want to I want to thank the deacons very much for their cooperation in preparing the meals for us. Thank you. Thank you. And the Bible says in Luke 22, 19, that Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. Recently, a famous singer passed away. He died. And it is broadcast and it is published that she had no fear of death because of her belief. She had no fear of death. She believes in what she believes. But I thank God today that we have a Savior who died and lived again. Yeah. And we can boldly say we have no fear of death. And if you are not born again, then you have a right to have a fear of death. There is no guarantee. But there is guarantee in Jesus. So this is the body, the body of Christ, he says. This is my body. Father, we thank you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the body of your son. We thank you because we are saved through the wounds on your son. Through the body, we are saved. We are saved. We are saved through your son, Jesus Christ. We give you thanks and we give you praise and we bless this bread. We bless this bread. We bless this bread in the name of Jesus Christ. For your glory, Father, in Jesus' name, let us partake. says in 1st Corinthians 10 16 he said a cup of blessing which we bless it is a sharing in the blood of Christ and he who tells us we have a better covenant the blood of Christ a better covenant than what the Jews had in the Old Testament the blood the blood the blood of Christ Father, again we come and we thank you for the blood of your Son. And we bless it now to our bodies, our hearts, our spirits, our lives, to our church. And we receive it, O oh God, as a gift from you. And we join with your Son, with the Holy Spirit, with all the host of heaven, to rejoice and to be glad in this your day. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, let us drink. Lord be with you, bless you richly, strengthen you. Glory be to God. Pastor Marjora, hallelujah. Oh, we have to take the offering. We're getting, getting ready for the offering now when they're finished. Um, yes. Glory be to God. Isn't it wonderful, saints? Isn't it wonderful? Hallelujah. What a hope, what a hope, what a hope, what a hope we have in Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. standing here I feel burden for burdens is there anyone with a real burden my brother I look at you and I you look like one of my sons stand up yeah you 
Oh God, oh God, pour out your spirit upon him, pour out your love upon him, let him feel your love, let him know your love, oh God, release, relieve, deliver, bless, in the name of Jesus, my brother, I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ, the blood of Christ is able, the body of Christ give you peace, shalom today. In Jesus' name. Is there anyone else who feel burdened? You have a burden today. Masai. Uh, Jesus' name. Okay, saints, you could pick up your offering. Go ahead, my brother. Praise the Lord. into your kingdom yes. you know and sometimes we think we're just giving into a ministry but God we're giving into the kingdom of heaven Hallelujah. and God it comes God as such a powerful blessing as we give God we know that it's multiplying yes. I mean when you give into DLA you're giving to Guyana probably Trinidad you're giving to Jamaica these are all the areas it's going but it's giving into God's kingdom so bless every hand God that has given today. Small or great, God, it's all counted in heaven, oh Father. And we give you a praise for it. Multiply it. Multiply it like your grace, God, in a mighty way right now, Father. In Jesus' name. And supply all needs because yes. you are our Jehovah Jireh. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, Amen. give him praise. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor.
more than welcome to come and worship and to praise God. Amen. Any slide? Any other clips? I just want to thank some people. You need to know what's happening. This, the, uh, when, yeah, we ha this was Monday, and this, this little boy was shoveling, and with his sister, this is Dr. Um, Amanda's children. They came. Next one. So we had big help. This is the crew. So Jerry, Pastor Haroon, um, Andrew, his uh, brother Dune, uh, Dr. Amanda, uh, Jamie, husband, and the two kids. You will see what they did here. Next clip. This is what happened. It's a lot of gravel. A lot of gravel that they spread to keep this situation. So I want to thank them and the others who were here. Next clip. These two guys. Desmond and John was up, up there cleaning out that whole track. You see these spots here? Uh, water was backing up, and they took out a lot of dirt from here, and that's part of the problem. Thank them for me, please. Next clip. Okay, you see this? I have a page called for passes only, and I have 11,200 pastors on this page internationally, and it's growing by leaps and bounds. So pray for this page that we can influence pastors around the world. Now, 11,000 is not a small number of pastors to be following you. So praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. No, you have more. You want more? Oh, he has more, the one. The one with the flower bed there. Yeah, I sent it to them. Well, if you look at the corner when you're coming there, you'll see a beautiful sight. Stand up, Sister Lucinda Brown. She uh, brought a friend, a neighbor, and she spent her money, and she cleaned it out, and she spread it, made it look really beautiful. Thank you. And why I'm showing you this is because if, if somebody would take one... You see, I told you I said... So this is what it this is what it looks like now she has to put a little more because she ran out of this stuff but what a beautiful thing and this is a, a neighbor who came and um, this is what it was before and so they beautified it thank you sister brown thank you so much okay i think i think that's it oh no yeah this go go, go to the next one this is how the dumpster should look Next slide. I had to clean it up. The next one. With the dumpster open. I want you to keep your eyes open for somebody's dumping stuff in our dumpster. And it's... There, they got it. All of this was thrown on top of the dumpster. That's a $260 fine every time if that lid is not closed properly like how I showed you. I want you to keep your eyes open to see if anybody's dumping. We need cameras. We need some help to buy a camera for that particular area so that we can catch. This is what it looked like. You can't leave it like that. I come every Tuesday morning and make sure that the dumpster is... Go back to the other slide where it was closed properly. Like this. It has to be like this. And uh, if not, I took everything out, put it on the side, and then go back and fill it up. So thank you guys for helping. Uh, thank you for showing the clips. Um, if, if somebody loved gardening or 
Just take, we still have one corner there and one corner there by the fire hydrant that needs to be pretty up. And so if you love gardening, just come and do something and make the place look better. The fire inspector came suddenly in me yesterday. I was cutting grass and um, I'm glad I met him. And he took pictures of the entire building all around. And he said, I said, what do you think? He said, I think you guys are looking good. I said, am I in any trouble? He said, no, 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 no. You, 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 you're making the place look good. And so I was very happy that the fire inspector would tell us the place is looking good. And thanks to you. Thanks for all the help. And some of you who cannot, and of course, uh, my beautiful partners here, but Brother Lewis and Carmen, who have done, they keep on cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. And thank you all, all. For, for whatever little you do, but and some of you who cannot do physically, you, you, you make a contribution financially to help us keep it like that. Thank you again. Okay, I'm going to preach in about five minutes, and my boy is going to sing one more song and get me ready for the pulpit.
give somebody a high five. Amen. Tell them it's good to be in the house Ooh. of the Lord. Oh, yeah, I love this section here. You see this section? <laughs> this is a noisy section. I love it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise yeah. the Lord. They know how to praise. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise <laughs> God. I'm preaching by default today. Uh, turn with me to 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 3. It's a unique story. It's a real story. It's not a parable. And... Um, I feel, you know, we just celebrated 52 years of, of marriage. And somebody asked my wife, well, what is the secret? What is one of the secrets? And she said, when you're right, take wrong. <laughs> it works in the marriage, you know. Because most of the time the husband is right and... And you gotta take wrong. Oh because boy, if, you don't, if you don't talk, if you, if you keep quiet, you, you will get his food cooked. But, so you know, you, know, you know how it goes. That has something to do with my story here. The question I have for you is why are you taking up my screen? And I want the screen down and I want the scriptures on it. I want the white background. Yeah. Because this, there's not enough light. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Has anyone at any time, somebody insulted you to your face? How did you respond? I've heard people say, I'll put down my salvation for five minutes and deal with you. <laughs> Has, have you ever experienced somebody lied on you? Oh, yeah. Totally lied. Yeah. And brought witness to say that you said such and such and you knew you never said it. Yes. What do you do then? I heard um, when you get slapped on one cheek, you turn the other cheek. Okay, let's assume you turn the other cheek. What happened when you run out the cheeks? Well, the story we're about to talk about has these elements in it. And... Um, Let me read it and then you'll see the big picture. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16. Good, thank you. Then there came two women that were harlots by profession unto the king. And they stood before him. Let me comment as I go before I get into the text. It doesn't matter who you are, what lifestyle you carry. There's a day coming when you'll have to stand before the king. Amen. They stood before the king. Guilty as they were, however their condition is, they stood before the king. And I am asking the people of God to get ready. Because you do not know when you may have to stand before the king of glory. So, in all your sitting down, get ready to stand. So they stood before the king, and the one woman said, O oh my Lord, I and this woman dwell in one house. They shared an apartment. And I was delivered of a child with her in the house. It came to pass the third day, and I will make mention of that important phrase just now. It came to pass that after I was delivered the third day, that this woman delivered also. Three days later, she delivered. And we were together. 
There were no strangers with us in the house. Just the two of us. So whatever happened, happened between the two of us. There's nobody else to blame. Sometimes we look for a scapegoat. Sometimes we look for somebody else to blame. But there's nobody else. It's just both of you. Who's going to believe your side of the story? And the woman's child, verse 19, died in the night because she overlaid it. I will talk to you about the dangers of carelessness. And she arose at midnight, the midnight switch, and took my son from beside me while my handmaid slept. And she laid it in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to give my child milk, behold, it was dead. But when I had considered it, there are many things we have to reconsider. Talk about that. And the other woman said, no, 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 no. The living son is my son. And the dead is your son. Stealing and lying goes together. And then the other one, no, no, no. But the dead is your son. The living is my son. That's a mother's crying. And that's how they spoke before the king. Now then, this is uh, the first test of Solomon's wisdom. This follows after the prayer he had asked God for wisdom. And this was the evidence. That if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Who gives to all men liberally and will not withhold wisdom. So there's no reason to be a foolish virgin. Because wisdom is available to all who would ask. And here was the first test of his wisdom. Then the king said, look, I understand you are saying this is your son, and you are saying this is your son, and you are saying this is the dead, and you are saying this is alive. What's going on here? King said, okay, bring me a sword. And they brought the sword before the king. Imagine the king don't have a sword on his throne. They had to bring one for him. And the king said, divide the living child in two. And give half to the one and half to the other. Then spake the woman who's a living child was unto the king. For her bowels yearned within her. And she said, oh my Lord, my Lord, my Lord, give her the living child. And in no way say it. But the other said, no, no, let it be neither mine nor thine. But divide it. Some people just love division. They just love to divide things. They just love to divide families. They just love to divide people. They just love to divide the church. So it's a response that I want to talk about. My the topic, therefore, is... If you take wrong, God will make it right. When you look at the picture, this woman took wrong. Although she was right. But for the health and the welfare of what she brought forth. My subtopic, my theme is let it live. Let it live. Let the church live. Let your relationship live. Let your friendship live. Let it live. Even if you have to take wrong. And trust in the justice of God. Because he will make it right. Let it live. See God wants life in the church. Sardis. Was in a bad situation. I read just one verse. Two verses. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works. 
See, when people don't see what you do, God sees. He knows your works. I know your work and thou has a name that thou livest and art dead. Ooh. I'm trying to connect this with, with the passage. You have a name that you're living, but really you're dead. This woman claimed that the child was hers. Claiming life when she really produced death. And this is the warning. Be watchful. And strengthen the things which remain. That are ready to die. There's some things in our lives that are ready to die. We are on the edge of death. Spiritually. Emotionally, you can't handle it anymore. You have been plagued with so many cares. Your life is cumbered with this and that and the other. And you're on the edge of insanity. You feel like you're going to go mad today because your life is flooded. You have become a Martha twice and not a Mary. You are cumbered and overloaded with many things. And some things in your life is ready to die. It's ready to go, disappear. And it will happen if you, like this woman, become careless. She, the complaint was given before the king. And the mother, the real, the mother of the living child was explaining to the king. And in verse 19, he said, this woman's child died in the night because she overlaid it. That means she rolled over on the baby and smothered the baby. In the midnight hour, in the time of darkness, people fall asleep spiritually. They roll over on the very things that they were given life to and they kill it. That's carelessness. Why the other mother didn't do that? You have to nurture the small things, the baby things that God has given to your life for it to grow. You just got to nurture it. You got to feed your spiritual life. You got to just not drink milk. Get to the place where you can eat meat. Get to the place where you can take an insult and smile. Get to the place where somebody lies upon you and you say, God is the judge and God is a witness and he will vindicate me. Do not ever give tit for tat. No, no eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Some people don't give you a tooth, they give you teat. They give you a full mouth. We have some mouthy people, you know. You just say one thing, as one man said, look, I talk to my wife in sentences, she answers in paragraphs. <laughs> one fellow said, I, you, you're lucky, I talk in chapters, she read the whole book. <laughs> yeah, people love to talk, but blessed are you when you can hold your peace in the face of accusation. <laughs> you know, Pilate was so stunned at the behavior and response of Jesus, he said... Wait, are you just going to stand there and take all this accusation and not defend yourself? And the Bible says he opened not his mouth as a lamb before his sharer is dumb. Sheep, when they go to the slaughter, they don't cry. They, don't, they just remain silent. And, and when you see the enemy coming, there are times when... If you talk, you expose to the enemy things that he shouldn't know. And it pays to stay quiet. Actually, James said, study to be quiet. It's an art. I'm, I'm guilty. My wife has a way of touching buttons that... Ugh. And she knows every button to touch. That's what you get for 52 years. But I touch buttons too. 
And I annoy her as well. So we are good at annoying each other. But that only lasts for a minute. Next minute, I'm... <laughs> you got to make up quickly. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Oh, don't go to bed angry. Sometimes I'm trying to hug her. She pull her hand away and go. I say, okay, I'm coming behind you. I ain't letting this go anywhere. Oh, hallelujah. You can't afford to be careless with your marriage. You can't afford to be careless with your church membership. You can't afford to be careless with your giving and your receiving. Some people like to give, but they won't receive. They don't want. You ever try to give somebody something and they turn away from you and say, no, I can't have it. Why? That's pride. If somebody give you, no matter if I love when people give me a dozen of egg or two bananas or three apples, I am happy. I am thankful for it because they're giving from their heart. They're giving what they have. If I said, don't give me nothing, then that's pride. You have to not only learn to give, but you have to learn to receive. And when somebody give you a compliment, say, praise the Lord. Just praise the Lord if they say you're a wonderful person. If you're a really good person, just praise the Lord. Give him the glory. You know, compliments are like perfume. It's meant to be inhaled, not swallowed. Because when you swallow compliments, your head swells. So, she overlaid her child because of carelessness. I am saying we can't afford to be careless in these last days. I'm saying as a foolish virgin, you can't afford to walk without extra oil in your lamps. You just have to. And so the child died. And this was at midnight. But she switched the child at midnight. The point here is, Whatever is done in the dark will be revealed in the light. Many things we do and people can't see, but God sees. And when we do wrong and wickedly and we hide, the Lord will expose it and the Lord will bring it to light. Jesus said so. That which is spoken in the dark will be brought to the light. He said the bushes of ears. What's spoken in the rooftop will be heard in the neighborhood. Hey, we can't hide from God for long. We hide from people, but we can't. It, it, the light, the light will reveal it. The word of God will reveal it. So no matter how dark the night is, when the day comes, revelation takes place and people will get to see exactly what happened last night. So she said, you know, I felt the coldness in my bosom. And when I woke up in the morning to give my uh, breastfeed my, my child, the child was cold. I realized this is not my child. And when I had considered it in the morning, you know, I don't know about you, but when I wake up, I wake up at five, six, and I stay on the bed and I consider things. I, I think about how yesterday went and how today should go. I consider, I plan my schedule, what I'm going to do, what I'm not going to do. But most of the times, nothing that I have planned went according to schedule. Because you got to, in my situation, I, I found that you just have to trust God for every hour. You must have a plan for the day. You can't live without a plan. But that plan must be submitted, subjected to the Lord's will. You plan and let God bless it. And if it's not in his will, it's not going to happen. So don't be disappointed when the evening comes. But when the morning comes, consider these things. Consider how many hours you're going to pray today. Consider how much Bible you're going to read today. Consider how many people you're going to call and wish them well. And say something nice to them. And consider how many people you're going to encourage today. Don't just get up and say, I thank God for my coffee and go your way. No. She considered it in the morning, and when she considered it, she discovered the truth. And as you meditate on the word, you will discover the reality of, of life. And the decisions you make during the day will stem from that consideration. 
And so they begin to argue before the king. This woman who lost her son, she wanted the, the living child. There is an emptiness in some people who craves for life, who craves for joy. They lost it, but they want it, and they don't know how to get it, so they want to steal it from you. Don't let anybody steal your joy. Don't let anybody steal the life that you brought, the ministry that you give birth to. Don't let anybody take it away from you. They will lie, they will accuse you, uh, malign you, blackmail you, make your character look bad, destroy your reputation, but because there is a just and a living God, he will vindicate you. And these people, he will make you shine in front of them. Those who deny you, those who uh, pull you down, he will lift you up right in front of them. Somebody said, get and always walk with a chair. So that when God bless you, people won't be able to stand. You'll give them a chair to sit. Because the blessing that's coming upon you is unbelievable. Hallelujah. God will justify you. God will make it right. When you take wrong, God will fix it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there's this craving uh, for, for life in people who have lost. And we feel the... We feel their pain, but, but it can, God can restore these things. You don't have to take it from people. You don't have to snatch people's joy. You don't have to rub anybody of their happiness. God can give it back to you. He's a restoring God. He's a God who can make things happen again and again and again. He's a do it over God. And you need to say, do it again, God. Do it again, God. Give me back my joy. Even the psalmist said, oh, Lord, I lost my joy. But give me back my joy. Give me back my joy. I tell you, joy is probably the most precious thing in the believer's life. Hallelujah, because the joy of the Lord is your strength. When you wake up happy and you go through the day, you find strength and energy that you didn't know you had. Praise his holy name. And so the craving can be satisfied because he who made you can forgive your carelessness and restore unto you uh, that which you have lost. There is hope. There is hope. And so the king said, okay, I, I, I hear the case. Bring a sword. And uh, Jace, go bring my sword quick. I forget to tell you that. So he sent for a sword. So I just sent for my sword. Come quick, Jace. But there is also another sword. A sword that divides. But take on the spirit. The word. Don't practice this. Just bring it. Yeah. This was on the pulpit here. This is a symbol. Yes. said something like this I would imagine put the child there but there is another sword the sword of the spirit that's able to divide the mind the thoughts the heart we want this sword of the spirit not the sword of the flesh because people use the sword of the flesh asked Peter on the night of the betrayal Jesus said I hey, hey, Get, get a couple swords. They said, we have two. He said, that's enough. When the Judas came and the servant of the high priest came to arrest Jesus, Peter didn't. P Peter was a fisherman. He knew nothing about sword. He went to split the man's head. He went for the head. The, the, the high priest soldiers, they wear helmets. And so it didn't cover the air. The helmet came right around here. 
And so the sword slipped down the slide of the side of these and cut off his air. So Jesus said, put away your sword. Okay. I put it away. <laughs> and because of the use of the sword in the flesh, we have cut off the air of many of a high priest servant who cannot hear what God is saying now. Because Jesus made it clear, he that had ears to hear, let him hear. If you don't have an ear, how are you going to hear? Please don't cut anybody's ears off. Don't cut them off from the word of God. Don't point your finger at anybody and say, ah, you're guilty. Some, one pastor said some Christians wear umbrellas in church. And when the word is coming, they say, uh-huh, send it to the back row. It's not for me. Yes, it's for everybody. The word of God is for everybody. The word of God doesn't hit and miss. It doesn't pick and choose. It's the word of life. It comes to you. It analyzes. It sects. It divides. It dissects. It bisects. It trisects. It will cut you up. But make you whole. That's the good thing about the sword. It's a two-edged sword. It cuts and it heals. So the same word that cuts you is the same word that will heal you. Hallelujah. So she said... Let it live. Don't kill it. You know how many people that I have heard would like to see deeper life shut down? Well, one sister was telling me that um, Aska, wait, right sister Renny, she was telling me. Some, some lady said, um, so where you go to church now? She said, deeper life. He said, you mean that building, that place still open? She said, I heard they shipped the pastor back to his country. You hear lie? You hear rumor? Ask sister what I told her when I said, when, when I heard that. I said, praise the Lord. Go back and tell them we are alive. Go back and tell them after 32 years, we're still standing strong. And no power in hell can divide this church. In 32 years, we never had a split. We never had a split. In a multicultural church, that alone is a miracle. To God be the glory. How do you respond when people accuse you, when people throw insult at you, when people try to pull you down? You just say, God, I leave this matter in your hands. You are the judge and you will vindicate and you will judge right and the, the king judge rightly. And when he said divide, the lady said yes. Divide them. Some people just love division. Paul said let there be no division among you. No schisms. No little group here and little group there. Cut that out. That's childish. That's not kingdom. That's not the body of Christ. If I decide to cut this hand and put it there. And take this hand and put it there. And take my leg and put it there. And the body is divided. What kind of body am I going to have? The church cannot be divided. The church must be united. It's like the eight day anointing that comes down. From the head of the priest down to his beard in the garment. Oh, how pleasant and it's good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Let there be no division in the house. Let it live. Let the church live. Let your marriage live. Let your family live. Let your soul live before God. And if you have to take wrong, take wrong let it live because God is a good God and finally it's happened on the third day it's very important to me three days after two things existed death and life in the same room 
Picture that in Calvary. That when I died and should have died, rightly so, he took my place. He took my dead child. He hugged it to his bosom and he gave it life. I am alive because he lives. I live again because he rose from the dead. Easter Sunday is not the only day we celebrate life. We celebrate life every day because he lives. He lives in my heart. Three days later, life conquered death. Life won. And you will win too. When things go wrong, he will make it right. Trust in the Lord and he will vindicate you. Whatever you do, let it live. Pay the price and let the church live. If you have to take an insult for the church, take it. The Lord is going to vindicate you. Hallelujah. Could you, could you worship the Lord with me? Jason is going to come and close. Let, let, stand with me if you don't mind. And let's give God some praise. And, and maybe you need some reassuring that God who sits on the throne will, will prove that you were right. Because you took wrong. Taking wrong don't make you wrong. Taking wrong don't make you wrong. Take the wrong. God will fix it. God will fix it. Father, we praise you. Give him, give, 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 give him some praise. Hallelujah. Oh, praise to you, Lord. You're a just God. You're a righteous God. You never do anything wrong. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Hallelujah. We trust your wisdom, Lord. We trust in how you fix it, Lord. We trust you today to make it better tomorrow. Oh, Lord, turn of a midnight into a midday bundle of joy. Give us back. Give us back our babies. In the nation, babies are being slaughtered. Orlando is the capital of abortion. Many, many innocent, millions of babies are aborted. Oh God, give us back. Give us back our babies, Lord. Give us back our babies. Hallelujah. Make this house of prayer. Fire of our altars never burn out. May the fires of our altars never burn out. May the fires of our altars never burn out. Make this house of prayer. Pastor, appreciation, round of applause. As we close, let's take that word with us throughout the week. Let it meditate in our lives. Remember some of the stuff that he said to take right or to take wrong when people accuse you, when they talk about you, because your God and your judge will fight for you. Remember that. Remember that God will fight for you. You don't have to fight for anything. You don't got to say nothing. Just give him praise. And something's going to happen to some of us this week, but we're going to have to practice it. Because the devil don't like you hearing this word. And he's going to try your faith and test you this week. 
And remember, the less you say is better. Just give God praise. Let's, let's, let's close our eyes, let's bow our heads, and, and, and just lift your hands towards heaven. And, and thank God for him being your judge. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that no matter what people say, no matter what they do, your word is what matters. You have the final say. You say yes and you say no. You can bring anything back to life. Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the encouragement, oh God. We thank you for the man of God that he came and poured out his heart to us today to bless your congregation. Lord, I pray for this audience that we will take that word and live it, oh God. We will take it with us. We will try our best. And Father, I pray for anybody that needs a special prayer right now. You know what they're dealing with, oh God. I pray that you will reach down today and touch them. I pray that you will heal them. I pray that you will encourage them. I pray that you would bless them throughout the week. Let them know that you are a God that never fails. You are a miracle worker. You can break any chain, oh God. No matter if it's nighttime and the midnight hour and things look dark, morning is coming because you're alive, oh God. Bless them, oh God. Bless the ministers. Bless the ministries, oh God. Bless this building, oh God. Keep it standing, oh Lord. Keep this church growing, oh Father, as we put it back into your hands. Bless us and protect us. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. 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 And Brother Jerry will come up and do the final dismiss. Give Brother Jerry a round of applause. Just, just, just real quickly, Pastor, that's a message directly from God. Hear me. Sister Eutrus, don't feel badly or different. Marriage after 49 years is like being in a, in a Star Wars ship, pushing <laughs> buttons. Seriously, pushing buttons. And I needed this word. Because there are times, I don't care who you are. Men, you know what I'm talking about. There are times that you, you feel like you come to the end of your rope. Women, you too. And you feel as if you know, just you had enough. But the Bible, what God, what God is saying to us this morning, take wrong and let it live. Yeah. Take wrong and let it live. And it's not because you are so right. You hear me confess this morning? That I have prideful anger. When you disrespect me, I get very angry. But take wrong and let it live. That's a word from God today. Pastor, may the Lord bless you. You're bold to stand here. Sister Eutrus is okay. We are in the same boat. All of us. All of us. You are men who, you men, you know what I'm talking about. And you women, you know too. Because that is, that is life. But God will deliver us. God will vindicate us. Oh, let us praise the Lord. Jason prayed already. So you go in the name of Jesus and take wrong and let it live. Put the sword away.
yet another level Double, double, oh. double, double, blessing, double, double, oh. double, double, anointing, double, double, oh. double, double, healing, double, double, oh. double, Come double, on. double, oh, oh, oh. double, oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh. double, 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 double,
overflow for your people, Holy Spirit. Holy go Lord. with them where they go, Jesus. Rejoice with them when they rejoice, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.